Hello everyone, welcome back to the Keep Productive YouTube channel. It is Francesco here. Today I'm very lucky to be joined by the superhuman CEO, Raul Vora. Um, it's so good to have you, uh, Raul. Cool, well, thank you for having me. So good to be here. Yeah, definitely. So um, first off, um, introduce yourself because obviously like a lot of people have been hearing uh, about superhuman and obviously your work there. So maybe you could take us through your role and, and a bit of the work you're doing there. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm Rahul. I'm the founder and CEO of Superhuman, where we make the fastest email experience in the world. Most of our users end up getting through their inbox twice as fast as before, reply to their important emails sooner, and many of them see inbox zero for the first time in years, which, as you can imagine, is pretty life changing. Definitely, definitely. And uh, I, we got to chat last time and it was quite cool because I had never seen Superhuman in action and then you showed me it and I was like, wow, this is uh, pretty neat. So, um, I mean, like, what was the passion behind Superhuman? What, what, what kicked you off into doing this? Well, I've been doing email companies for a while. Some of your viewers may remember Reportive, which was my previous startup. We built the first Gmail plugin to scale to millions of users, essentially on the right-hand side of Gmail. When people emailed you, you could see what they look like, where they work, their recent tweets, links to their social profiles. That company scaled rapidly, and in about two years, we were acquired by LinkedIn. Uh, whereas it happened, I ran all of our email integrations. So during that time, I became intimately familiar with how professionals do their email. Uh, and as I'm sure you know, the TLDR is badly. Uh, it turns out there's a billion professionals in the world, and on average, we spend three hours a day doing our email. So on average, that's three billion hours per day that just goes into email. And when time came for me to leave LinkedIn, I was looking for a, a huge, massive impact thing to do. And I remember this was 2014. I was commuting home. I was probably in an Uber or a Lyft or something like that. And I remember thinking, there's basically only one thing that we do for longer than we spend commuting. And of course, you have to remember in America, we spend a lot of time commuting, uh, and uh, that is email. Uh, the only thing we do more, in fact, uh, is, is sleeping, and I wasn't about to start a sleep company. And so I realized I was in the right place at the right time with the right connections, knowing the right people to start the right team to take on this three billion hour per day challenge. And so we imagined building the fastest email experience of all time. And over the next few years, that turned into superhuman. Yeah, I mean, I've, I, the thing is, you, I've like seen it on social media, and obviously there's, there's a lot of hype about your application. Like, um, I've seen there's like something like 200,000 people on the wait list. Is that right? I think uh, these days we're actually closer to 250,000 people on the wait list. Oh, wow. That's mad. <laughs> yeah, you must be uh, really excited for ever, to get everyone started on that. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of hard to visualize 250,000 people. So I've just given up trying. Yeah. That, <laughs> think, think of football stadiums and things like that. Yeah. Um, brilliant. Well, let's do a little bit of a demo. Uh, maybe you can show us around how it works and, and, and the feature cell. Uh, one of the first questions people have is, is when faced with the bold claim of this is going to help you do your email twice as fast. How does it do that? You know, what is it about Superhuman that helps you do your email twice as fast? And really, there are hundreds of things I could possibly show you, uh, and maybe we'll uh, meander our way through some of them. But before we do that, I thought I'd start by showing you three very specific things. So the first is the raw speed of the software itself. The second are super powerful email workflow tools. And the third, uh, third I'm super excited about, we actually have some of the, the most powerful email triage in the world. Uh, so first of all, let's look at the raw performance of Superhuman itself. Um, there's this uh, story that uh, may, may or may not be apocryphal, but I'm gonna, gonna go with it. Uh, when Paul Buchheitz, the creator of Gmail, he was a very early employee at Google, sat down to build Gmail, he had this rule. Uh, and this rule was that interactions should take place in 100 milliseconds or less. Why? Because that's the threshold at which things feel instantaneous when they're longer, you notice the gap and it slows you down uh, and you drop out of flow when things are faster. 
uh, you stay in flow and uh, you actually end up being tremendously more productive. So we've brought back, back rather the, the 100 millisecond rule and we're actually pushing it to the next level. So I'm just gonna open uh, this lovely email that you sent to me. I'm gonna turn on our performance metrics. What you're looking at right now is superhuman command. Uh, actually everything inside of superhuman is done with a keyboard shortcut or a command line input. And I'm just gonna turn on the performance metrics right here. Uh, and then I'm gonna use some keyboard shortcuts to go back and forth between these emails. And you can see how we're able to render the emails in as fast as 53 milliseconds per email, uh, already twice as fast as the 100 millisecond rule that Paul set out to create when he was at Google. And we're actually now working on a new renderer. It's not yet released to the public, uh, but we have a new renderer that can get emails onto the screen in as fast as 32 milliseconds per wow. interaction. Uh, and for those who are developers, they may know that the Chrome frame rate is 60 frames per second. That gives you just 16 milliseconds for, per frame uh, to do stuff. And so when you're getting things faster than 32 milliseconds, it's literally one frame of Chrome. Uh, you can't go any faster. And so we're now hitting up against the physical limitations of the hardware, which is kind of awesome. It's, it's that... Um, and, and you'll see me talking a lot more about this over the course of, of next year, but it's that buttery smooth sensation of, uh, of a video game. Uh, and that's really what, what we're trying to aim for here with these interaction speeds. Uh, so it's not just, by the way, the, the speed of uh, rendering, it's also uh, the speed of some of the more crucial things we do like search. So let's just turn these metrics uh, off again. So you would have had the experience in, in Gmail, uh, or especially if you use a, more of a native email client, uh, that searches can take uh, many seconds. Uh, so I'm just gonna search here for my co-founder, Comrade, and here we are, instantaneous search. I can scroll back into that. And this even works for people that I don't email that uh, frequently. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I work closely with uh, Jason Calacanis and occasionally on his show Twist, he has a wonderful producer, Jackie, uh, who's uh, won some Emmy Awards. She's great. Uh, and here I go and I scroll down and I can get all the way back to 2015 uh, and these search results appear just instantaneously. Uh, so if you're the kind of person who does a lot of email, you're in that three hours a day email bracket just the speed of the software alone is gonna start contributing to not falling out of flow and to getting through your email twice as fast. Uh, so that's, that's how the, the speed can achieve that. Lovely jubbly. Well, I think like every time you show me that, I'm always like sort of mouth open. It's mental how fast that is. <laughs> uh, it's kind of fun. Um, I uh, uh, recently asked uh, my assistant to make sure there are you know, blocked out times in my calendar to do email, so I have email holds, uh, and yeah. uh, you know m maybe on on a separate call I can share how I, I structure my day. I think folks would find it interesting. Um, but but the quick anecdote is I have these email holds, and I know that a lot of people, a lot of my peers, you know, other CEOs in San Francisco who uh, who are on the wait list for Superhuman, they don't quite have it yet. They kind of dread their email holds, and so they're not going to sit down to do it. I really look forward to doing them. Because uh, yeah. to me, it feels like I'm, I'm playing this fun game uh, and I'm having this, you know, this, this really rewarding interaction with this software. Yeah, um, and I've, I've, I've heard there as well, you, you've sort of baked in the, like, video gaming concepts of the way that you've done it, right? Yeah, that's right. So uh, there's, um, and I've, I've got a lot more content that's about to come out <laughs> on this, but uh, essentially about seven or eight different principles of, of video game design. I used to be a game designer back in the day. Uh, and it, it turns out if you're building software aimed for consumers or uh, superhuman, it's, it's bang in the middle, it's business software, but it's designed to be used uh, in a consumery way, then you can achieve incredible results by using some of the principles of game design. Fantastic. Yeah, it's really, really impressive. Cool. Um, yeah, carry on. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so I promised I'd show you three things. That's the first thing. That's just how fast the software is in itself. The second thing that I'll show is uh, incredibly powerful email workflow tools. Uh, so let's have a look at uh, a kind of email I receive a lot of. Uh, it's going to be from 
Ed and, uh, sorry, from Elliot rather, and uh, he wants to get his buddy Ed onto Superhuman. Um, so this is the kind of email, I call this a, a pseudo sales email. A lot of founders will get this. Uh, it's not my role within the company anymore to onboard folks, but a lot of the requests from onboardings, uh, especially for VIPs like Ed, are going to get routed through me. Um, and you might hear folks, uh, especially as they move into management or leadership, say that, uh, oh, my life has become that of a, of a router. I'm more of a you know, get the right message to the right person in a timely fashion. And I've definitely felt that happen uh, in my role. Uh, I was at dinner last night and, and my cousin was asking me, he's like, what do you do all day long? And I'm like, I'm just routing stuff. Like this, this thing goes to that person, this thing goes to that person. And it's actually really important because if, if I do that slowly, if I block, and then the whole organization uh, could grind to a halt. So it's very important that I, I answer these kinds of emails quickly. Uh, and I get hundreds of them every week. Now let's pretend for a second I didn't have Superhuman. And so uh, I'm gonna head over to Gmail here and see how difficult uh, this would be to process in Gmail. Gmail, of course, is very slow, but here we are, finally got it up, up and running. <coughs> okay, uh, so we're looking at uh, the same email in Gmail. Uh, and what I want to convey is is just how how tricky, how slow uh, this would be to process in Gmail. Uh, so ignoring for a second that uh, my my eyes are already starting to bleed a little bit, uh, I'm just gonna gonna hit reply all here. Uh, and of course, this is technically an introduction. Uh, so I'm gonna say uh, uh, thank you, Elliot, to BCC. Uh, and now, of course, I actually need to put Elliot on BCC. Uh, it, it's, it's most frustrating, this happens to me occasionally when people say they're moving into BCC and then they don't, and then I'm stuck on this long thread for a while. Uh, but in any case, uh, here, let me turn on Do Not Disturb. I thought I'd done that earlier. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna move Elliot to BCC, so I have to click this thing, then I have to click here and, and drag him, but, but dragging doesn't work. Uh, so I have to come all the way over here, click this guy, all the way over here, and then drag that down there and then drag Ed over here. And then now I'm finally ready to actually start doing my email. Uh, and so then I might say, hi, Ed, great to meet you. Uh, and then I would say, please fill out superhuman.com slash welcome. And please also meet Caitlin and Sahar on CC. They'll find us time to connect. Uh, so Caitlin is my EA and Sahar uh, runs our onboarding funnel, uh, but I'm I'm still not done because I have to come back over here and then actually add them on CC, which means I have to click this tiny little thing over there and then click over here and type in Caitlin and then I have to type in Sahar as well. Uh, but I'm still not done because of course we're running a company and so we have internal systems of record like every other company, we have a CRM and I will wanna make sure that this gets uh, archived into the CRM. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this email is still pretty bad. I, I haven't exactly been the friendliest or the nicest. Um, and it's taken me about uh, several minutes to get here. If I were to do it properly, it would probably take me five minutes. And if you can imagine this happening over hundreds of emails per week, that is a tremendous amount of time just on routing, on, on very repetitive kind of emailing. So how do we make that faster? Well, I'm gonna get this down into just two steps inside of Superhuman. So let's flip back over. And again, this is an introduction. We have commands for all kinds of things, including introductions. So let's say I didn't know the keyboard shortcuts to process this command. I'm gonna look it up. I'm gonna type in intro, because it is an introduction. And we have a command, instant intro. The shortcut is command shift I, and that's exactly what I am gonna do here. So I'm gonna hit Command Shift I, and then boom, in one fell swoop, that does three things. It replies all, it moves Elliot to BCC, and it says, thank you, Elliot, to BCC. Now, if that wasn't quite right, it just gave me a hint at the bottom of the screen there. So let's say it was actually Ed that I wanted to move to BCC. I could just hit that again. And in tapping that shortcut, I could cycle through the various options. Uh, and we, we have all many of these kinds of hints just to sort of guide you down the right path 
Uh, so you never actually have to touch the mouse. You can stay on your keyboard, you can stay in flow, and you end up doing your email twice as fast. But of course, I'm not yet done. I have the whole rest of the email to write. And so we have this very powerful feature called snippets. I'm going to hit the shortcut to invoke a snippet. Uh, and you can look, look at them right here. And the one that I'm going to use is Survey VIP. So in using this, it's going to do several more things. It's going to CC Sahar. It's going to CC Caitlin. It's going to BCC the CRM and type out the whole email, insert a hyperlink, include a smiley. I'm now being super nice, super professional. Uh, and all I had to do was hit one keystroke. So I promised I was going to boil it down into just two steps. So let's see how that is when I'm operating at speed. That's as fast as one and two. And here we go. I'm done. And you can do it just as fast on your phone as well. And you can imagine this rolling out across hundreds of your emails per week. And then that claim that people are saving hours per week on Superhuman probably starts to make a lot more sense when you compare how slow it is in Gmail to how fast it is in Superhuman. Yeah, definitely. So if you like, um, obviously with the onboarding, you like um, help people find the situations that you sort of are repeating a snippet and a, and a scenario. Do you, do you do that off like the like 80, 20 principle or anything like that? Like, like where the majority of your sort of use will be? Yeah. So the, uh, the onboarding process is very much a structured interview, uh, you know, for, for for let's say an executive, I'll, I'll simplify it uh, greatly, uh, will ask, uh, do you have an assistant who helps you schedule your time? Uh, and if so, will then help create a snippet for that. Now in this inbox, uh, I actually don't have such, an, uh, such a snippet, but let's go and make one. So here we are creating a snippet. Um, the way that I would normally do this, uh, if I wanted to hand something off to Caitlin, who's my EA, uh, is I would just have a snippet called Caitlin because uh, this is one of the main things that I work on with her. And then I would say something like, uh, please meet Caitlin on CC. She'll, oops, in caps lock. Still find this time to connect. Okay, uh, we've got super fast ways to insert emojis, obviously. Uh, and I'm going to just put her on the CC line right here. Snippet's done. I can now use this. Uh, by hitting command semicolon at any time. Um, let's pretend that you were asking me uh, for a meeting. What I would do here is just hit command semicolon, type in a few characters of her name, and boom, we're done. Yeah, that is uh, so fast. And that's it. And then I would just send the email. Blimey. That's really useful. And, and you can set them up whenever you want, which is perfect. So ideal. Yeah. Brilliant. And, um, and what's the third aspect? <laughs> Yeah, so the third aspect is, uh, I promised, the most powerful email triage tools in the world. Uh, and actually looking at this, this inbox here, uh, you can see just how nutty my email gets. In the minutes of 7.52 alone, I have uh, a shocking five emails, one every uh, 12 seconds on average. Uh, this can easily add up to over 1,000 emails coming into my inbox every single day. Uh, and it's, it's honestly more than any human being can deal with. Now, uh, if we flip back over to Gmail, I think we're all familiar with uh, Gmail's uh, attempt at solving this, and it's not particularly great. It's these categories, and there are other ways to structure your inbox as well, but you know, most of the folks I know are on these categories. And uh, th the problem is Gmail was built for the mass market consumer. As, as we both know, it has over 1.5 billion users, uh, and it wasn't built for folks like you or me. It was not built for the people for whom email is work and work is email. And we can get a sense for this as we jump into the various categories here. So let's take a look at social. Uh, a little fun game I like to play is where is the work? Um, <laughs> so, so Quora, probably not work. LinkedIn, not really work. A uh, message from Tomas definitely looks like work. Uh, this uh, DMs definitely look like work. Uh, a lot of not work mixed in here as well. Flipping over to promotions, uh, probably not very much work, uh, although I might want to look at this newsletter uh, from our accountants. Uh, over here in updates, 
uh, we have different kinds of work. We have uh, Google Docs uh, invitations that we see here, uh, as well as uh, notifications from AWS that we use to host Superhuman. Uh, and again, in forums, we have different kinds of work. We have customer satisfaction responses, as well as emails from GitHub. Um, so uh, I, I, I don't know if you're familiar with um, this idea of the cost of context switch, uh, the context switch overhead, but uh, it turns out that for every context switch that we do, every interruption that we have, it can take on average 23 minutes to recover from the mental overhead of doing that switch or incurring that interruption. So if I were to sit down through one of these lists and just try and uh, do some recruiting, do some uh, customer support, do some engineering, every single time I make that switch, I'm actually incurring a very large mental tax. And it probably isn't in the order of importance or urgency that is actually required by the company for my day. So the question is, how do we make sense of this? What is the business version of Gmail's categories? Uh, and that's what we've built. We call it Split Inbox. And I'll show you how we use that uh, right here. So one of the most important things in any technology company, of course, is the pace of engineering. And I want to make sure that uh, I am being hyper responsive to our engineers so that no one is blocked on me. It's like a generalized version of that uh, um, router idea. So let's actually have a look and a search for uh, some emails from GitHub. So these are GitHub emails. Uh, folks are requesting review. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to split my inbox by my GitHub emails. I'm going to create a specific stream, a specific inbox for GitHub emails. So I hit Command K and I tell Superhuman that what I want to do is I want to split my GitHub inbox and I'm going to split it on GitHub mentions. We get to choose here between all GitHub notifications, which makes sense in the early days of an organization. When your GitHub volume gets really high, at some point you just want to split, uh, split down to mentions. Uh, here's one I actually have made earlier. So I'm going to jump right into my split inbox settings and just turn it on. And you can see that the 19 GitHub emails that I have to deal with are right here now in one inbox and I can just plow through them. And when I'm done, I know that I'm done with GitHub and I don't have to worry whether there are any more scary GitHub emails sitting in this list of 486 emails. But it's not just GitHub. Uh, we obviously also do a tremendous number of things in Superhuman and as the CEO, I have to unblock everyone no matter who they are. So it's also things like Google Docs. So. Uh, I could normally just go to a Google Docs email and say, hey, I want to split my inbox by all of my Google Docs streams. Because I've made it earlier, all I do is click on this. Uh, and now you can see all of my Google Docs emails. And I can make sure that I've answered every single one of these. Uh, when I'm done, I'll just archive them. And then I can actually achieve inbox zero in any one of these splits. Uh, but obviously, there's more that I have to do with my day. <laughs> Uh, and one of the things that I like to pay particular attention to is how folks are feeling with the product. And so we use Typeform as it happens for our customer satisfaction surveys. Uh, and here I now have the stream of my customer satisfaction surveys coming in into their own inbox. And then the last one that I'm going to turn on is the team inbox. This allows me to process internal emails first before I deal with the outside world. And now the magical thing is that I have created an inbox that mirrors the structure of my day. Uh, if you speak to any productivity consultant, the number one thing that they'll ask you to do is to be proactive with how you think about your time to put the tasks that you actually intend to do on your calendar to switch tasks when your calendar tells you to do so. And here I can now use my email tool to help me do precisely that and stay within certain contexts. So I can, in the start of the day, work through my engineering inbox. Then I can unblock everyone who's asking me questions on Google Docs. 
uh, then I can poke my head into customer satisfaction and just get a sense of how people are feeling. Then I can focus on any internal emails, uh, whether it's things like a design review or a company field trip. And then only then do I head back to the outside world and start to field requests there. Uh, and I can yeah. tell you that as, as a founder and as a CEO, I've gone from anxious and stressed to calm, relaxed, and productive. And the feedback from the rest of the team has been, uh, when we built this feature, uh, gone from was waiting on you, uh, and I didn't know whether you were just annoyed at me and you didn't reply to my email or it got buried in your inbox, through to now you're on top of everything regularly uh, and just replying to things. Uh, and, and then, of course, you get the um, one of the, the side benefits for me and for anyone who uses this feature um, is you get the really cool experience of Inbox Zero in specific streams of your email. So I'm just uh, archiving these emails here in GitHub. Uh, and now I've hit Inbox Zero in my GitHub email. Uh, and you can see it, the beautiful reward of this tranquil and peaceful background as a result. I see a lot of these on uh, Twitter and, and people feel like really relaxed when they're actually uh, at one of these screens. And, and I think people like to land on them because they're different each time. Um, they do, yeah. Which so is we really nice. these every day, exactly. Yeah, so it's lovely. And uh, I also like, I didn't even notice before that like traditional email apps um, have it down the left-hand side accessing all of these, well, not like this, but sort of different accounts, right? But up there, it's sort of on the top um, and it's it's really nice because it's almost like tabs, um, but sort of very subtle tabs. Um, so yeah. I like that. Yeah, yeah. We we do have, of course, the the list of folders over here if you want them. Yeah. Um, but the the goal is to sort of keep you focused on uh, on the things that you need to do. And so we only put these here so that you get a sense uh, of the numbers and, and how much work is still in each little bucket. Yeah, I love it. Thank you so much, Raul, for taking us through them. Um, I've got a few more questions for you, if that's all right. Yeah, absolutely. Here, I'll just stop Lovely. sharing my screen here. Brilliant. Um, obviously, at the moment, Superhuman is an onboarding process. Maybe you can take us through like how you're currently uh, onboarding people and your plans maybe for a public release, because I know you know, at least 250,000 people are waiting for that. <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, so the onboardings uh, are, are one of our favorite things about the customer experience of Superhuman. For those that don't know, uh, everyone who uses Superhuman, we do a personalized concierge onboarding with. This is a live 30-minute video call with one of our wonderful onboarding specialists. And they're experts, not just in email, but also productivity itself. And the way that these calls proceed is that, uh, much like this, we'll meet over Zoom. Uh, we'll ask you a little bit about your day, uh, how you structure your day, uh, and then we'll help you set up Superhuman. So we might help you set up split inboxes like you just saw. We might help you configure some snippets like you just saw. Uh, we'll watch you how you do your email and Gmail or whatever else you may be using for your email. And then we'll show you how to do it twice as fast inside of Superhuman. This is going to be a combination of new workflows so you hit inbox zero faster and also teaching you powerful shortcuts so you never actually have to touch the mouse. Uh, now, in terms of public launch, which was your second question, we actually already consider ourselves publicly available, uh, but we are continuing to operate the waitlist just because there's so much demand for Superhuman. Uh, so if folks are interested in getting access to the product, uh, all they have to do is, is come to the website and sign up for Superhuman there, uh, or find a referral from folks that they know who are already using Superhuman, uh, and we're racing as hard and as fast as we can through that waitlist. Yeah, definitely. And I think it'll be really exciting when uh, more and more people get onto it, which is uh, wicked. Um, one of the questions that I think a lot of people have about Superhuman is the price. And and you actually, we actually had a call before anyway, but you explained it to me. I did some thinking and reading around price and you convinced me because like I understand obviously time is money and, and um, sort of around that. But maybe you can explain it for those who are like curious at, and worried about the pricing, I guess. Sure. Uh, so for those that don't know, the, the price is $30 per user per month. Uh, and the way that we've priced this is uh, to, we think, accurately reflect the value that Superhuman is creating for our users. Uh, so most of our users end up feeling hours back per week 
uh, and obviously many times that per month. Uh, and for the kind of users that we have and what they're doing with it, which is namely work, uh, that is tremendously valuable. In fact, we often get the feedback from our user base that that's actually really cheap. Uh, and when you compare it to other things that they buy, whether it's Zendesk, the customer support tool, and the median price is $50 per seat, or Salesforce, where the median price is $150 per seat, uh, it, it turns out to be one of the more value for money and cost effective productivity uh, tooling that, that they end up buying. Um, so uh, th that's how we think about it. It's, it's really in terms of the, the time that you save uh, and the, the value that uh, you're, you're able to create for yourself when you're using the product. Uh, and the, the one thing that I would add is, you know, we're, we're coming from a world, and we're going to see this a lot over time, where for tools like email, there have really only been two solutions. Uh, Outlook, of course, from Microsoft, and Gmail from Google. And both of these are free or nearly free. Uh, and there is, a, there is a cost that we pay for that. There's one that we've talked about in the media a lot, which is the cost of, of our privacy, as it were. Uh, and uh, we, we pay for it in advertising. Uh, but there's another cost as well, which is we end up using one-size-fits-all solutions. And so in serving 1.5 billion users, Gmail isn't really thinking about folks like you or me. They're thinking about the average person because you know that's what counts. Whereas for Superhuman, we really do get the luxury of focusing on the users that we have. And it's a very different kind of user. Uh, and because of that, we're able to build a solution that's much more tuned, much more focused, and much more effective. Uh, and, and that's really what we're selling uh, for the price point that we have. I love it. I think you've got a, a really exciting 2020 ahead. Um, I, I think it's only going to be um, you know, opportunities after opportunities. And um, have you got any sort of uh, like major features that you're releasing start next year? Oh, yeah. So we're... we're, we're Super excited for 2020. Uh, we were, you know, just doing our 2020 planning and have decided that in the first half of the year, we're, we're really going to focus down on products and ship some very exciting things. Uh, so uh, Q1, uh, you know, we're still sort of firming up our plans, but we expect to do a lot more work uh, on calendaring type features. Uh, and it's, it's not particularly clear what the precise form that will take is yet, but I'm excited to do things around uh, better scheduling, um, helping you share availability. Um, you know, let, let, let me actually flip back to, to share for one second, because the thing that uh, I think you'd really like to see. Uh, so I'll pull this up. Can you see, see my screen? Yep. All right. It's all up. Fantastic. Um, so, so let's say that uh, I'm in uh, London and you're inviting me over for lunch, uh, and uh, we're trying to schedule that. Now, first of all, over here on the right-hand side, I can, can actually see where you are, which is uh, a boon when scheduling. I can also see what you've been uh, tweeting about, which is fantastic. So I'm going to like this over here, like that. I'll <laughs> actually head over to your profile on Twitter. I'm going to follow you. Uh, now that I have your attention on an out-of-bound channel, um, I'm going to start replying to this email over here. Uh, I want to say, uh, hey, Francesco, how are you fixed for lunch? Whoops, lunch tomorrow. And as soon as I type tomorrow, it actually shows me tomorrow, but I unfortunately have a lunch with the Delight team. So I uh, can't do tomorrow. But notice how where my cursor is, Superhuman is suggesting maybe I should suggest the next day. And that is command shift equals. I'm just going to pop that out. It says Thursday, nope, I've got one-on-ones. Uh, and it looks like Friday, I'm actually free. And notice how when I did that, I didn't actually have to type anything. Uh, that just automatically updated what it was typing for me and sent out uh, that email to you. And so we're going to take that to the next level, uh, not just updating the email automatically as I flip through my days, but proactively suggesting times when it knows that I'm free. Uh, so that's the kind of thing we're going to look at on desktop. On mobile, we've got so much more exciting stuff to come. Something that I'm personally tremendously excited about uh, is taking our iPad experience to the next level. Um, so right now, uh, our iPad experience is sort of a hybrid between uh, what our iPhone experience is and what a fully-fledged 
iPad UI would look like. Uh, we're really excited to make it a first-class citizen, bring the wonderful mm -hmm. keyboard shortcuts from our desktop app to the iPad uh, and, and make it a formidable email device. Uh, something that maybe you've seen from other guests is, uh, I think 2020 is, is really the year where the iPad will take off, or it's, it's already taking off as a first class device for work. 17% of the iOS devices that we see are actually iPad devices. Uh, and it was never like that before. So this is really the time where we're seeing the iPad enter the workplace as, as a device that people use to get stuff done. Yeah, I see it really often um, over this side. Um, obviously, like people just going, like even if they don't want to take their laptops with them, just taking their iPads and actually getting email done in coffee shops and different places. So yeah, it's uh, becoming more, more and more popular for sure. Lovely. Well, thank you, Raul. I appreciate, honestly, appreciate your time taken out to, to guide us through all of that. And you did it marvelously. So that was brilliant. Um, and, and where can people find Superhuman and yourself after this, um, this interview? Sure. So uh, for folks looking for Superhuman, it's of course superhuman.com. And then they can learn more about the product and, and sign up. Uh, if folks are looking to get in touch with me, I'm very active on Twitter. And that's just my first name, last name. So R-A-H-U-L-V-O-H-R-A. -A -A, uh, and you can follow me there. Uh, and you can also follow Superhuman there. Uh, that's uh, obviously Superhuman. I think folks know how to spell that, so I won't spell that out. Uh, and uh, we, uh, we're very active there as well. Uh, and that's where you can see, uh, I'll, I'll often retweet users, what other folks are getting out of Superhuman and how they're feeling about it. Um, and if I were to condense that down to just one thing that folks should do, uh, I'd, I'd recommend folks go and check out superhuman.com slash love. Uh, and that is a, a lovely set of, of all the nice things that, that people have to say about Superhuman. Uh, and uh, it might convince some folks to give it a try. Yeah. Oh, I'll, I haven't checked that out myself. I've got to do it myself. <laughs> lovely. All right. Thanks, Raul. And, uh, and have a safe uh, and lovely day. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. All right, lovely. Bye. Cheers.